Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time for another devotional uh, time together. Excited to be with you this morning. Uh, I wanted to follow up on something I was uh, saying, uh, following up on Sunday's message about roads and ways that we can take that are away from Jesus and the way that he calls us to travel. But before we do that, I'd like to bow our heads together. Let's, let's pray for uh, each of you and for our city and for our county. Let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us, and we thank you for the graces that we know that we are receiving from you, the protections we are receiving as a, as a town, uh, as a church. Father, we pray that you would bless uh, those who once again are searching in these days for answers to the situation in which we find ourselves. Let there be a gospel that comes to them clearly. Let them understand and find who, out who your son Jesus Christ is and help us as your children be part of that. We want to enter into holy conversations with those who are seeking Jesus. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So yesterday uh, I talked with you about um, uh, a way that was taken away from Jesus because there are, there are many ways that we can take. There are many roads, there are many options that, that uh, present themselves to us from day to day and a lot of diversions uh, to the Christian path. Uh, Jesus says the, the, the way. And uh, yesterday we talked about um, the road uh, to Emmaus and how that was a kind of a diversion away when, when the disciples felt like Jesus was dead and it was all over. They were, they were kind of diverted away from the path and Jesus had to come and turn them back uh, to the way. Um, this morning I wanted to talk about another uh, road, a famous road in the book of Acts, um, as we follow the, you know, the, the road, to, there's the road to Emmaus, and one of the, the next roads that we hear about in the scripture is the road to, to Damascus. Um, and this was, uh, Paul took this road, the road to Damascus. Remember Paul's story, you find it in, in Acts chapter 9, and you'll see the story of, of Paul. Saul, it says Saul's conversion, because that's his name, uh, that was his first name was Saul, and then they changed it to Paul. Um, but anyway, as you see this, can, this story, you can kind of see it for yourself in chapter 9. Um, Paul was aggressively persecuting the church of Jesus Christ. He was a, a, a Jew who was a disciple of a very high up uh, uh, teacher uh, in the Jewish religion. Um, he was uh, taught in a very strictest of uh, Judaism uh, teachings and, and, and so he was he was very zealous and very passionate for for Judaism and when the Christian church started to uh, you know kind of kind of raise up after Jesus was raised from the dead this the church began to to grow he was aggressively uh, persecuting the disciples of Jesus and um, he's on this road uh, to Damascus he obtains some letters from the high priest to go to Damascus and to imprison people who are following Jesus in, in Damascus. And so he's just uh, all excited about going and, and just kind of cut, cutting down the name of Jesus. And he's on this road to Damascus. And we remember the story, what, what happens uh, as in verse 3, as he nears Damascus on the journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashes around him and he falls to the ground and he hears this voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he says, who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus whom you are, are persecuting. <clears throat> now get up and go, Verse. Uh, this is verse six. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. So here's another road where uh, people are on a road a away from, from Jesus. They, this is a, this is a uh, yesterday's road was a road of despair this is a road of anger and rage, and uh, this is a road of just violence toward God himself. And some of us uh, have been tempted to enter this road, uh, the road that just is a very aggressive uh, and passionate uh, against God, and, and there's, you know, there's satanic temptations all around us for us to come down this road. And for Paul, uh, the thing that shook him out of it was a light. It's, it's just, uh, I find it, interesting that light uh, is, is used in the text and um, God and you could say it in a, in a kind of allegorical way God enlightens Paul he just 
he, he, this bright light is so bright that it blinds Paul and he realizes, Saul, he realizes that he is blind and um, then he goes and he fasts for three days and Ananias comes and prays for him and he gets, uh, his eyes are open, he gets healed and he gets baptized and, and is saved. And so here yet again is another ex expression in the New Testament of a person who's on a road and this person, he, Paul, was just like aggressively on this road. He has got no doubts in his mind that this is the road he, he needs to be on. And it took an act of God to knock him off his feet and to knock him to the ground and to show him how blind he was actually being. And so there's, there are people today that are on both roads that I've been talking to you about, the, the road of despair and the road of anger. And there's a lot of despair and there's a lot of anger in society. And, and despair and anger are two of the greatest reasons for people to turn away from God. They just... They just give up on God and they, they get angry at him for something or they, they get despair, they, they're in despair that there cannot be a God and that kind of thing. So uh, these are the two main reasons for people turning away from God. And it takes an act of God. And in both cases, Jesus had to come into the picture and he had to intervene and speak to these people who are on the wrong paths and had to basically turn them back around and to go the other way. And so as, as we think of these uh, paths that these two uh, people, these three people, uh, to have taken away from, from God, I think there's a lot of parallels in Henderson, in the city, in the county. And I, I believe there are people who are despairing, there are people who are uh, angry at God, and these angers and, and this desperation and this, this, this sadness and sorrow sometimes has roots have roots that go back uh, decades. And so some people have turned away from God long, long ago. And we have to somehow be the vessels of Jesus that go into their lives. And even though they are far, far down this road, uh, turned away from God, we need to be the ones who Jesus uses to turn them back uh, toward the light. And he will, you know, he will use us. And if we pray and if we partner with the Holy Spirit, I believe he'll use even miracles to do that. And it's not beyond, and it's not out of the question for God to do miracles, especially when it comes to convincing people that He is uh, the Savior of the world. So let's bow our heads together. Father, we thank you for these texts of Scripture that remind us uh, that we are to be uh, the light of the world. We are to be the hope of the world for those in despair, for those who are angry. Let us be part of this intervention of Jesus that turns people away from a path that leads to destruction, and back to the way that leads to life. And this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, uh, Chapel Hill. We'll see you very soon again.